Yo, what's up guys, it's Cyfex here, and I'm going to be bringing you some Mass Effect 3 gold multiplayer tips for fighting the Cerberus. I'm going to be going over which characters you want to use against certain enemies, and I'm going to be talking about the best weapons to fight the Cerberus against. Um, to get this started, the Sari Vanguard is an excellent choice. The combination of stasis and biotic charge, you can play very aggressive. And with the Paladin, she is one lethal ass character. As you can see, she can basically do it all with her Paladin headshot damage and her ability to biotic charge stasis opponents across the map. But her real power comes when fighting the phantoms. Phantoms don't have armor, therefore they are vulnerable to stasis. In this clip right here, I completely manhandle him with the combination of biotic charge and the paladin with the scope. I like to add the extra magazine size to the paladin just in case I miss a shot or two when the opponents are in stasis. As for fighting atlases, she is not very good. But don't worry, we'll have a solution for that. When using this character and there's an atlas coming on you, you always want to check your flank. Right here, there's quite a few nemesis behind this, and I take them out fairly easily. I see my friends running away from the phantoms and the atlas, so I come back and do even more damage. As for the specs for this character, you want to have weapon damage and headshot damage maxed in the Sari Chesticar and I wouldn't recommend putting any points on lift grenade. Sometimes the Sari Vanguard won't get it done in tight spots. That's what the Krogan Vanguard is for. for crowd control. Biotic charge combined with the Krogan assault rifle basically grants him the ability to do anything. If you don't get animated, this character's abilities are basically limitless. He can fight turrets, he can fight atlases, he can fight phantoms, he can fight anything. He has nearly max shields and health, and he has nearly max damage. This character is basically amazing. His only downsides are slow movement, and that's pretty much it. Right here, I make the mistake of not using an ammo pack, and because this character is so good, we still get away with it. If you're wondering why everybody's getting down, it's because my teammates right now are level 3, level 12, and level 16, and they hardly ever played this game. And we still managed to beat this wave 6 due to this character's abilities. When ranking up the fitness for this character, you can either go full melee or full shields. Uh, at the beginning of using this character, I liked using the melee, but now that I look at it, I think more shields would be the better because his weapon is very powerful after charging and his melee just doesn't seem to get the job done like it would in a Krogan Sentinel especially when the phantoms are in stasis one thing about the biotic charge is it stuns them every single time so rather than finish the kill you can go ahead and revive your teammates so even though that wasn't the prettiest hack we still got the job done and I already have 10 revives by wave 6 pretty funny not gonna lie this is just some more footage just showing the power of the Krogan Assault Rifle. This thing is indeed a replacement of the Neutered Falcon. Um, this is a DLC weapon. If you don't have it yet, I'd highly recommend buying Spectre Packs to get it. Some quick tips for this character. Uh, you don't want to point any points on Carnage because the charge and your weapon will be do just fine. It's along with a uh, heavy melee, which failed to work right there. And um, for barrier, you want to max it out and have the speed power uh, penalty reduced by 30%. That'll definitely help. And right here, instead of charging, you can use the barrier and watch the phantom float. Sometimes you'll uh, correct yourself and turn into Iron Man, which is pretty cool. But I shut her down with the uh, Krogan Salt Rifle right there. Got my nice 75 kills medal. But here is some infiltrator footage. Um, not the best at taking out phantoms. For some reason, body shots hardly have an effect, but incendiary rounds are amazing for taking out these damn uh, enemies. As you can see, it took out almost three bars of health, and I wasn't even shooting at the phantom. Um, 
Here's a turret down here. Turrets are one of the most lethal parts of the Cerberus. I, just, yeah, I, rev I uh, revived that guy and then he immediately got drilled. So you always want to control the combat engineers and the turrets. Um, here's a clip just showing the headshot damage compared to the body damage. You definitely need to take advantage of aiming for the head when you can, just like that case. And here's some Black Widow versus Atlas footage. You take out about two bars of shields and armor every time you hit them in the shield or in the gold area of the Atlas. That is where the Atlas's head is, I guess you could say. Um, so you definitely want to aim there. Here's another quick tip that you might not have known. When you shoot the combat engineer's back, it explodes, and it took out about half that phantom south and barrier right there. So you, when you can take advantage and shoot the combat engineer in the back, and hopefully that uh, turret back back will have some splash damage. Um, and infiltrators versus Atlas, just not much of a chance right there. So yeah, if you don't have the Black Widow, that's fine. Just try to get the Widow. This thing is a one-shot machine. You can shoot basically any infantry in the body and it will one-hit kill them every single time. This is one of my favorite weapons in the game. Um, I s one thing you want to take advantage of is the reload cancel. Would you see the one in the Widow show up? Hit the Y button or whatever power button you have and you will cancel the reload animation saving yourself about a good second you don't need to always do it but it will definitely help out with your fire rate and your overall kill times um, you can even do it to run away in situations and still actually be reloaded um, so the widow's damage to atlas when maxed out with level 3 equipment modifiers on it takes out about six bars of shields or, or armor every single time that's pretty much the same as the Black Widow firing three shots but this is a little bit faster because it is one shot each time and as you can see the Widow shooting through the wall while camo took out the entire Phantom's barrier um, if you are accurate you can, I mean the sniper is a very very lethal weapon in this game a lot of the slow fire rate weapons are extremely deadly this definitely being one of them um, as you can see the difference between headshot damage and body shot damage is pretty high um, right there I missed a shot because the stupid energy train knocked him down but that's alright um, and this is just the end of the wave just showing you all my uh, Widow 10's damage to this Atlas I missed the cockpit by a few feet so that's why I didn't get max damage And but the incinerary rounds are still doing that thing burning through the armor and this shot hit it right in the cockpit and bam that is half the armor in one shot with the Widow um, this is the Geth Engineer one of my new favorite characters what I like to do is charge up the uh, Geth Plasma Shotgun and then overload before I shoot. Um, in a second you'll see just how powerful it is and how quickly I can kill phantoms. Um, this character sacrifices defense for a damn good offense. As you can see I just destroyed that phantom trying to uh, flank us right there. Um, as for the specs, well I'll get in that in a second. This is just a slow-mo what I do. Play claw, I overload and then shoot the charge up shotgun and phantoms don't stand a chance. As for the specs, I only put three points on the get turret because it is nice but it doesn't really need to be maxed out. Um, I, I do max out overload and hunter mode and I do power damage for all the hunter mode ones and then for overload instead of doing the second chain overload I like to put on shield damage because it while on hunter mode I can destroy shields of any infantry in one hit. Uh, that includes Geth Pyros, you know, Geth Hunters, so that's a really nice addition, and then I just blast them away with the shotgun. So this character is very lethal, even though in Hunter mode I only have about 500 shields, um, this shotgun will just decimate anything in your path. And when it's in the hands of a Geth Infiltrator, it's even more lethal.
If you're having trouble staying alive, the Krogan Soldier is the character for you. Maxing out fortification and fitness grants you ridiculous abilities, and combining this with shield power cells, your shields will be recharging in less than a second. In this clip right here, we're getting, it looks like we're getting overrun, but with the combination of my unique abilities, the Cerberus and Santa Chance. Uh, I like to put on the Claymore shotgun with my maxed out weapon specs and I can put this thing to town. Right here this Atlas shoots me and my Kroken takes it like the Hulk and then gets the shield back immediately. A character I've been really enjoying recently is the Batarian Soldier. With the combination of the Batalon and Ballistic Blades, I can have a lot of health and shields and still play very aggressive, unlike the Krogan. Uh, he moves a little bit faster and is just generally more fun in my eyes. Um, I can play very aggressive and just get in the face of any infantry the Cerberus brings. As you can see in this clip, I'm just standing out in the open and not even getting hit. The Talon is a wonderful onyx weapon in this game that I overlooked at first. It has good headshot damage, it's fairly light compared to the other shotguns, and is pretty damn powerful. As you can see with the combination of my friend stasising everything that comes on the landing pad, I can basically roam around and destroy these phantoms. One thing about the ballistic blades that I really like in this game is that they do 1600 damage over time, not instantly. Even though it would be nice instantly, I can just watch the phantoms bleed to death. Another thing I like about this character is that he can actually fight the atlases, unlike the Asari Vanguard. The key to the talent is letting the reticle reset each time you shoot it. This will grant you long shots and will basically destroy any opponent. As for the last character in this video, the Turian soldier is not the best at taking out phantoms, but can easily mow down any other infantry the Cerberus brings. <laughs> Even though I get the Phantom in this clip, it was still a struggle and moments like this will easily cost your team in the higher waves of gold runs. But this right here is what the Turian Soldier was meant for. I kind of like how my tone of voice changed about three times in this video. Uh, I did do multiple takes, so sorry if that was uh, bothering you. Um, just to conclude, um, you want to have at least one Asari with stasis, you want to have at least one infiltrator, and you want to have somebody with crowd control and geth doesn't hurt. Um, you want to play on bigger maps so you can take advantage of shooting the atlases from far away. The atlases are very slow and when they spawn far away in objective waves you can take advantage of that. Um, always watch your back, phantoms will come out of nowhere. Um, look out for the grenades, they're very powerful, for some reason they're more powerful than atlas rockets. Um, but with all these tips you should be perfectly fine. One of my favorite parts about this game is figuring out different ways to fight the enemies in this game. Now I know there are a lot of characters I didn't mention. Um, I know that Jarrell is a very good character if used correctly. And I'm sure there's other characters that I haven't figured out yet, but I feel like these ones are very good, if not the best. So, if you're seeing this months from now, or if you're mad that I didn't mention your favorite character, just relax. You don't need to dislike the video or hate in the comment section. Just realize that uh, there is no one way to play this game. Um, just leave a comment, maybe suggest something if you have any questions about how to play a certain character or anything. Also leave a comment and I'll be answering them all in no time.